in this video I'm going to compare two circuits um, in circuit one here we've got two resistors connected in series with an alternating current source and in circuit two we've got two inductors connected in series with an alternating current source and in both cases what we're trying to find here is the magnitude of the resistive element in both circuits but we'll do it in a way that we approach the question the same way even though it has different elements in the circuit but if we approach it the same way each time you'll see the pattern that appears so in these cases what we're really trying to find here is the overall impedance connected to our source. So for example, what is the equivalent impedance of those two in series? And what is the equivalent impedance of those two in series? I have to think about that for a second. Now, when dealing with these questions, it makes sense to represent all of our elements as impedances. Now let's deal with this circuit here. This has two resistors in series. So the total impedance here will be the impedance of the first resistor, Z or one, plus the impedance of the second resistor, Z or two. And for a resistor, we'll put this to the side here, the impedance of any resistor, just its resistance, and that's measured in ohms. So that actually makes this first example quite easy. The total impedance of that circuit will be 360 plus 18 And that would be in ohms. So the total impedance is just 378 ohms. Now I'm going to put in an extra bit here. Zero times J. So we're dealing with AC circuitry, so we've got complex numbers to worry about because we're dealing with phasors. And we tend to represent our impedances in Cartesian form, where the real part of that impedance, which in this case is 378 ohms, represents the resistive part of the circuit. And the imaginary part of the overall impedance, in this case, which is zero ohms, represents the reactive element. And this makes sense here because in this circuit we only have two resistors. So it is all resistive and none of it is reactive. So let's compare that to this circuit here. In this circuit we have two inductors. These are two reactive elements in our load. But we would approach this the same way. The overall impedance of that circuit is these two impedances in series. So it's the first inductor, ZL1, plus the impedance of the second inductor, ZL2. And what we need to recall here is that the impedance of an inductor is reactive. So we have to multiply it by J. And we also need to work out the inductive reactance. And the inductive reactance depends on the frequency of the supply and the inductance, which we're given for both cases. 
So we need to work out each of these values first. ZL1 will be J times 2 times pi times F, which is 900 in this case, multiplied by the inductance of that first inductor. That'll give us a certain value. And then the impedance of this second inductor will take the same approach 2 pi times 900 multiplied by 1.5 millihenries by 10 to the 3. Now I'm going to do these calculations on octave. Which you should be seeing on the screen at the moment. So let's define a couple of things. Our frequency is 900 hertz. Make sure we have everything empty here. Frequency is 900 hertz. The impedance of the first, sorry, the inductance of our first inductor is 3.6 milli henries. And the impedance of the sec or sorry, the inductance of the second inductor is 1.5 milli areas. And then we can push that equation straight in. So the impedance of the first inductor Z L1 is J times 2 times pi times frequency times first inductance and you see you get this reactive element here so I'm going to put that onto my sheet 20 plus 20 point 3 6 J ohms and I'll change the values here to get our second one. That'll be plus 8.48 J. So I'm going to swap back to the camera here. So those are the reactances for our two, sorry, those are the impedances for our two inductors. So now we can add those together to get the overall impedance 20.36 J plus 8.48 J getting 28 Point eight four J ohms. And again, I'm going to write that in the full Cartesian form here. So it'll be zero real part plus twenty eight point eight four J reactive. So now compare that to this first one. This one we just had resistors, so we only had a resistive element no reactive element. Compared to this one, we have no resistors, we have no resistive element and just a reactive element brought on by the inductors and it's positive because it's brought on by the inductors. So then this is I think a good example of just how to compare what the resistive elements bring to the circuit impedance and what the reactive elements bring to the circuit impedance. If we approach it the same way, because these are in series, we add them together, but only when they are represented as impedances. So here's our impedances for each of those elements.